Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So let's go ahead and try to create a Rust application Well, an Android Rust application, to be exact <laughs> So let's get started, okay So first of all, I need somehow to actually see my Android phone So there is a pretty cool application called SRC Copy, I believe Or as uh, SCR copy you're gonna find the CPY you're gonna find the link in the description okay um, there you go this application is pretty cool to be honest um, so if you go to Windows uh, download the, the zip file right and you're gonna go to the folder you're gonna extract that up so let's extract this out. Extract all, extract. And there you go. It's extracted. All right. So we have all this beautiful stuff. Okay, so you're gonna run a terminal inside of here. Just say CMD, right? And then you're gonna say SCR CPY to run the application. You can still double click, right? But it, it may not give you errors or, or stuff like that, essentially. So, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to just see in my Android phone, just plugging it in into the computer. And, uh, and you need USB. Uh, what is it called? USB debugging enabled, okay? But uh, of course I cannot actually show you my screen uh, if I don't have it already enabled. So I have it enabled and so I can show you where you can find th that thing, right? So hold on a second. Settings, okay, I'm just entering settings in my phone. All right. Oh my God, so slow for some reason, okay. All right, um, settings. Okay, nice. Uh, so now I'm just gonna say SCR copy or SCR CPY. Run it up and hopefully it starts a daemon daemon or whatever is it called and it's gonna tell you if you want to allow USB debugging or not the computer's RSA key fingerprint this is essentially to make sure uh, like uh, users that don't have access to your phone cannot actually plug in into your computer and just get access to it so I'm just gonna say OK to authorize it and then I'm gonna restart the application after authorizing it and there you go. Now this is my phone, <laughs> okay. Um, pretty old phone, but it should work out, okay. Um, if you go down into about phone, right? And you should go to the, what is it called? Uh, I believe the version, right? Click it multiple times, and as you can, uh, it should tell you developer mode is enabled. Uh, uh, it actually kind of different depending on the phone but for me at least I click on version multiple times and enables developer mode now if I go back I can go to uh, additional settings all right additional settings developer options and there you go there's all this developer options right it's enabled Home screen back up, blah, 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 blah. Okay, there's all this beautiful stuff. But here you go. If you go come to debugging, you can turn off this, turn on this USB debugging so you can actually use uh, SCR copy. And as you can see, I have it enabled. That's why I can actually do such a thing, all right? And we're gonna need this USB debugging later on too when we want to launch our application from uh, using cargo and stuff. So yeah, 
as you can see there's a lot of beautiful information right here and options essentially so for now we're just gonna uh, quit this and let's go back to our rust stuff uh, okay let's mm -hmm. all right so there you go now we have this guy next up let's look for NDK glue NDK glue so and in fact before that let's actually create a new project so cargo new let's say Android uh, application now if I go to my Android application projects you can call your project whatever you want and uh, actually no uh, hold on a second the, uh, hold on a second hold on, hold on I wanted to do something else okay remove that or in fact let me show you NDK glue if you go to uh, github NDK okay so github NDK by rust mobile all right if you go down it's gonna tell you the steps that you need to take in order to make it work so install the Android NDK and SDK so first of all make sure the Android NDK is installed together with target platform 30 by default build tool build dash tools and platform tools using the SDK manager uh, or Android Studio so you can actually go ahead and install Android Studio if you want but for me I'm just gonna install the SDK manager and if you click on that it's gonna take you to the documentation of Android and make sure to carefully uh, you know like uh, read this and follow it essentially but there you go we're gonna do it together uh, all right the SDK manager is a command line tool that lets you view install update and install packages from for the Android SDK if you're using Android studio then you don't need to use this tool and you can instead manage your SDK packages from the IDE okay so the SDK manager tool is provided in the Android SDK command line tools package to use the SDK manager to install a version of the command line tools follow these steps okay interesting download the latest command line tools only package from the Android Studio downloads page and then zip the package okay uh, hold on a second let's go back and I'm just gonna open that link in a new tab there you go and let's look for the tools for the command line tools there you go I just say control F and search for command line tools and I have Windows accept the agreement and download Android command line tools for Windows all right it should start downloading uh, all right lovely oh my god my internet connection somehow is so fast no idea I mean of course relative to my regular network connection but yeah <laughs> uh, okay fine uh, let's go ahead show more options and then let's extract it up extract command line and let's go back to the documentation let's see what we got here it's extracting it took a long time it's probably uh, really well uh, compressed <laughs> but anyway so what's next so you download that and zip the package move the unzipped CMD line tools folder so let's look for CMD line tool there we go uh, so we just gotta I'm just gonna say control C move the inzip CMD line tools directory into a new directory of your choice such as Android SDK this new directory is your Android SDK directory okay move the inzip CMD line tools directory into this here okay nice so let's uh, paste that somewhere uh, I'm gonna paste it into uh, local disk C because why not you can paste it whatever you wherever I'm gonna say control V um, right and with your directory content let it wait okay so here in fact we gotta create a new directory a new folder and call it whatever you want I'm gonna call it Android SDK just as they said Android uh, SDK like this put the CMD line tools there control X to 
so cut that and control V to paste it there okay and there you go now I have my Android SDK in my C disk C local disk so there you go nice create a subdirectory called latest okay so inside of CMD line tools we have to create a new directory called latest there you go what's next move the original CMD line tools directory contents not directory but contents including the lib directory bin directory notice.txt file and source.properties file into the newly created latest directory you can now use the command line tools from this location okay so it says to copy the bin the lib the notice and the source control C and paste them in the latest and there you go and uh, you can now use the command line optional to install a previous version of the command line tools run the following command we don't care uh, but there you go that's how you do it so to, to the version with the version you want to install for example blah 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 anyways uh -huh. usage you can use the SDK manager to list installed and available packages all right so let's actually run a CMD from from latest CMD there you go nice 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 oops oops hold on what's going on here fine I don't know why it opens up two files that's weird anyways uh, we got that out of the way now we can see SDK manager dash dash list but of course this won't work because the SDK manager is not inside the latest folder but inside bin, the bin folder. So you gotta say bin slash SDK manager. Well, dot slash bin slash SDK. Well, uh, you cannot really do that in the, C in the normal CMD. Let's go with the Windows PowerShell. Okay, so here I'm just gonna CD, C, uh, Android SDK and then CMD line tools latest and there you go nice now essentially I have a bin folder now I can say dot slash bin slash or I can go inside the bin directory right and then now I have all this uh, beautiful bat files which I can run or execute so I can say SDK manager Oh, by the way, let me zoom in a bit for people with phones. Um, so SDK manager. And then dash dash list. Oops, what's going on here? What? Well, dot slash, maybe SDK manager and dash dash list. Okay. So as you can see, we have a problem. Java home is not set and no Java command could be found in your path. Now, to be able to use this, I need Java. Okay, so I need Java. So let's go ahead and download Java. There you go. Oh my god, too bright. Download the setup. Open the file. Yes. Um, install. Why is it taking forever? <laughs> There you go. It's installing Java. All right, all right, all right, all right. lovely so Java has been installed now now I guess let me try to restart this guy how do I restart it no idea 
but first of all let me actually copy this path okay and then I'm just gonna run the terminal then I'm gonna say CD to that path and there you go we're back into where we were and now let's try to run it again so SDK manager dot bat dash dash list alright so what's going on here Exception in thread main, java.lang, the unsupported class version error has been compiled by more version in Java runtime. Uh, what? What, what, what? <laughs> no idea. Well, we could check when Google. So, copy. I believe I probably know why. Maybe I just need to install the NDK. Well, let me just uh, see and... Oh yeah, I, I need to install the SDK. So as you can see, uh, install the latest version of the Java SDK from this link. I mean, I knew it, but I wanted to show you <laughs> how you can do that. All right, because in fact, I did this. And in fact, I searched and I found that solution, that exact solution, uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, so Windows. 64 installer. Uh, Alright. Let's go with the installer. Wait for it to download. This is the Java SDK. So we have installed the Java runtime. Now we have to install the Java JDK. Alright. So when you don't install Java at all, you get that. Um, error about Java home not being defined the environment variable uh, but when you have Java on time but not Java SDK you get this stupid error uh, which doesn't tell you anything about Java SDK <laughs> uh, but there you go all right now let's open this GDK 19 well of course it may be different but doesn't matter uh, so I clicked on open, okay, yes, oops, no, all right, uh, preparing to install, there you go, next, it's inside of this path, C program files Java GDK 19. Just to make it easier on us, I guess, or you know what, fine, just keep it in that path. Although I don't remember the path now. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Close. Okay, so now we have actually installed the Java SDK. Let's try again to run that. Well, let's first of all, restart the terminal and let's try again but first let's go to that directory oops 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 and let's try to run SDK manager now and there you go it's working <laughs> nice 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 all right so if you say Java SDK dash dash list it's going to give you a, a bunch of packages that you can actually install, okay? SDK manager dot bat dash dash list available packages. And the packages that we need are the build tools, the platform tools, and the NDK, if I remember well. Uh, but let me go back to the... Okay, uh, platform tools platforms with Android 33 all right nice 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 NDK CMake this is how you update the SDK manager SDK manager dash dash update um, so yeah you can even give it the SDK root path uh, explicitly so and the channel uh, the channel if it's zero it's gonna be stable 
if it's one beta, two div, and three canary. Canary means just like in kind of nightly, right? The latest versions, the latest instable versions. Um, but anyway, uh, actually, it's better to say dash dash list dash dash channel is equal to zero. So you can only get the the stable packages. All right, and there you go. Nice. So now uh, let's go back. I believe to the where is my NDK? Uh, there you go. And we'll just run this in a new tab. Okay. By default, so we need what we need with the target platform. So as you can see, thirty. Uh, we need to to get the target platform thirty API. In fact, let me show you how you can know which API your phone is. If you go ahead, um, let me hold on a second, please. If you go to Play Store, I mean, if you go to Play Store, right? Uh, you can search for CPU-Z, but let's go with Play Store. And you can search for CPU-Z. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> CPU-Z. There you go. And download this guy, right? Uh, pretty interesting. And after you download that guy, um, I'm gonna show you how you can actually deal with it. So I just launched it on my phone, and now I'm gonna launch that uh, that thing. Uh, Windows partial or what? Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's go back to the Lloyds. Uh, SRC CPY. Well, uh, the extracted one, there you go. Let's put a terminal here, CMD. And essentially let's SR CRCPY. And there you go, this is my phone as you can see, CPU-Z. And you can see all the information about your GPU, your CPU, et cetera, et cetera. For example, I have eight cores, the device, Blah, blah, blah. Okay, but uh, the thing is, if you go to system, you can see the API level, the Android version, the security patch level, blah, 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 all that, that crazy stuff. Um, but there you go, the API level of my phone is 27, but it is fine if you even use 30, uh, which we're gonna do in this case, since that's the default for the NDK. Uh, although, just to, to tell you one fact, is that Play Store requires an API level of 31 and, and above. Um, as you can see here, uh, new apps must target Android 12 API level 31 or higher. So level 30 won't ha won't let you uh, upload your application into Google Play Store. Um, just be aware of that. But the thing is, uh, this is not updated. So maybe you could, uh, in fact, this is open source. You could probably update it yourself uh, or someone could update it or something like that uh, to for the newer versions. I, I don't think it's hard. It's probably so easy, uh, especially using the Android uh, editor. Yeah, anyways, uh, I mean Android IDE, but yeah. So now what, now what? Now, in fact, I need to download the uh, uh, the stuff that we need, right? The packages that we need. So you say SDK manager, hold on a second. Let's go back here. So SDK manager. And I don't really remember how you do that. Hold on. Dash dash install seems like. Oh, you just say SDK manager. And I need the platform tools. Okay, platform dash tools. And platform. Platforms Android. Then you give it which version which API version. I'm gonna go with 30 because it's actually the the default for the NDK currently, as you can notice here, 30 by default. 
uh, so that's why I'm gonna go with that okay mm -hmm. uh, build build dash tools I also need the build dash tools and to be honest with you it's kind of telling me that I to get over the target platform 30 by default oh yeah never mind build tools and platform tools uh, all right so there you go platform tools and Android 30 and build tools so now what we got uh, I have to say dot slash SDK manager and there you go fail to find package build dash tools and I believe I know why because you probably have to give it the version there you go yep you have to give it the version I'm gonna go with the latest version there is 34 but this is an RC so I mean you could use it but I'd rather not uh, okay let's go with that that's the build tools and accept the agreement or the license or whatever is it called wait for it to download the loading platform and while it's doing so we can continue with our stuff maybe so okay oh actually it's done already <laughs> interesting so did it download everything or what interesting I think I think it did I mean seems like it so latest CMD line tools and the Android SDK as you can see there is Android 30 platform and the platform tools there you go and there you go the ADB right here this is what we're gonna use to test uh, our application like to ho to install it into the device from our computer uh, all right fine 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 now I think we're ready yeah we're ready I think we do need to add some uh, environment variables but for now let's just continue make sure that, that, that okay now let's create a new library so cargo new dash dash lib uh, to create a library because in fact uh, we have to create a library so we can link it with the Android uh, uh, glue code right the start because in fact NDK glue what it does it just uh, have the starting code that you need to be able to link your function with the uh, with Android uh, application you know and stuff like that but anyways so cargo new dash dash lib and let's call it uh, Android application I guess now let's go inside of that Android application all right nice now code point we don't need this guy anymore let's grab this guy and let the R the RS let's remove this whole crazy stuff here uh, we do need another file called uh, or in fact it's fine fine anyways let's just continue Never name your project. Never name your project Android, as this results in a target uh, binary named libandroid.so, which is also the name of Android framework library. So I'll fail to link. Okay, so configure create for use on Android. Add the NDK glue dependency or create. So let's add NDK glue and cargo toml. Let's just say cargo add. Um, right, cargo add NDK dash glue okay oh my god second years for some reason Lord. anyways uh, what entry what's next so next is the lib create type but anyways let's go back to our main function we need this guy let's copy it over so as you can see cfg attribute target os equal 
or equal to on droid indicate glue main backtrace equal to on and then we have pub fn main the main function print line hello world there you go interesting wrap entry point with indicate glue see the indicate macro documentation for more options if you click on that oops 404 uh, this script is kind of outdated for some reason, but anyway, additionally to make this script runnable outside of Android, create a binary that calls the main function in the library. So if you want to run your application also on, on desktop, you have to add a binary uh, that actually calls your main function. Because in fact, what I'm doing here is essentially telling LDK glue that I want you to call this main function in, in, in terms of Android. Okay, but if I want to run my application in... Uh, in desktop I can I cannot I mean if we say but in fact by the way indicate glue have been added so let's configure that and by the way we could add toml uh, extension just to make this look nicer better toml whatever or you know what to be honest since this <laughs> this is rusty <laughs> Let's install it, I guess. I don't know which one is better, but anyways. And there you go. And in fact, I also love another, other some kind of uh, other extensions. I remember Cargo. Mm -hmm. Crates, maybe? Yeah, exactly. This one creates. This is pretty lovely. And now, if you go back to Toml, cargo Toml, as you can see, it tells you if this is the latest version or not. And then you can also select some other version without any problem, which is amazing. Uh, okay, so we got the indicate glue. But the thing is, we don't want those dependencies on all builds. We only want them when the target uh, binary is Android. So let's actually do that. And you do it like this. Target dot S CFG target OS equal to Android dot dependencies. All right. Now then configure the library target to be compiled to Rust. Uh, okay, so we have to tell Rust to compile compile it into a library, to compile our code into a library. And cdlib, I believe this cdylib is essentially a dynamic library, and lib is a static library. I guess lib is for, uh, so we can link it with a desktop application, and cdlib for, to link it with Android, for example, or whatever. Uh, anyways, uh, wrap entry point with indicate glue. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. Next up is, uh, as I said, right now, if we say cargo R, a bin target must be available for cargo run. So we cannot actually run it. But if we add a new main file, we call it main.rs or whatever you want to call it, then you're going to have a main file. Essential. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, okay, there you go, a main file. Then essentially, uh, write in your crate name, which is in my case, Android application. Although, what about crate? There you go. You can just say crate or you can say your Android application name. So I can say crate main, and there you go. Uh -huh. Actually, no, that doesn't, no, no. The create actually refers to the binary, oops. So Android application, main, there you go. Cannot find function create in create Android application. Uh, lib the RS, let's make sure to save this file. And there you go. Now, if we run this, cargo R, as you can see, it runs pretty fine in desktop, although this is also configured for Android. Um, uh, but yeah, now run the crate on your Android device. Now we need to, first of all, download the cargo-apk. 
Uh, all right, so cargo install cargo dash apk. There you go. Uh, what? Oops. Cargo install cargo dash apk. And wait for it to download that application into cargo. You can think of it like a plugin for cargo, right? Which will help you to build uh, APK APKs, right? All right, interesting. So of course, this is all just the, the initial setup, but after that, it's pretty pretty simple. So yeah. It's compiling that tool that we have trying to install. Then we're essentially just gonna say cargo apk run and make sure okay. Package cargo apk. There you go, nice. Now let's try to cargo apk run. I believe it's gonna ask us for to add a new target, to add the onroad target because we didn't. Uh, but first of all, it aired onroad SDK is not found. Please set the path to the onroad SDK with the uh, with the dollar sign on road SDK root environment variable. Okay. So, in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, I believe, I don't remember. So, VS Code environment variables. a particular syntax that you use to do that there you go so it's like this uh, dollar sign and open the this kind of things and say NV colon and then here um, you give it the name of the environment variable in our case it's Android SDK root and then essentially I believe after that you just give it the path to the Android SDK well in my case the Android SDK is in the C disk so let's go ahead and do that oops how do you do this Hmm. Uh, let me see. Let's copy this guy because I don't remember how you do that. How to set. to set NV variable in VS Code and there's an easy way actually in CMD what about equal what if we add equal there nope it's not that way man I don't remember it I don't remember how you do it in VS Code, but essentially we could go to the CMD, the normal CMD. Or in fact, can we do set Android uh, SDK root equal to uh, the the path is equal to Android SDK. Okay, seems to work, I guess. Uh, maybe so if I say set oops Android SDK root now if I if I actually try to run that cargo APK run all right so I have to do that actually I'm gonna copy that line into a normal terminal so 
command prompt I'm gonna set the variable and then essentially cargo are uh, what is it cargo APK run okay Okay, so the next up is onroad NDK is not found. Please set the path to the onroad NDK with onroad NDK root. So did I actually download the NDK? I don't really remember myself doing that. Right? Yeah, I didn't. So let's actually download the NDK too. SysDK manager NDK and hopefully that would do it. Failed to find the package. Okay, so uh Let's see the packages names. Oops. Let's look for the DK here. There you go. So let's go with the latest version because why not? And let's paste it there. And that should download it and install it. And yeah. The Lloyd and Android NDK. Interesting. So I, all right. So it's taking years. I'm gonna pause the video until it's done. All right. So it was quite fast. It's done. The NDK is done. Now let's try again, hopefully. Cargo APK run. Um, maybe let's actually restart the, the terminal. Uh, command prompt, normal command prompt, of course. Let's try right now to say cargo APK run. I have to set the, <laughs> the path again, okay. So. Or I guess what about actually setting that in the hold on a second. I can copy maybe that that thing. Hold on, hold on. We can maybe try to do something. If we go to environment systems, environment variables, and we can go to the path. Um, okay, let's go to the path, I guess. Actually, not the path. Yeah, not the path. Uh, we have to add a new variable. Uh, Android is called Android SDK root, and then the or actually Android home because I remember Android SDK root is is deprecated if I remember well. But anyway, just go with that. And then next up is essentially uh, copy the path put it into the value and hopefully this works okay okay and now let's actually restart that CMD let's add a new command prompt and let's try to see cargo APK R uh, it seems to still all right I mean if I see Visual Studio code again and hopefully it works this time. Let's see. Because I just added the environment variable, so maybe I have to restart this, the uh, Visual Studio code. So now if I say cargo APK R. Okay, so it's set. As you can see right now, it's detecting it. Next up is onroad is indicates not found. So I have to also set the onroad NDK root. But it is, it told me that Android Home is the new one that should be replaced with. So let's go back to our environment variables. Okay. So instead of Android SDK root, let's call it Android Home. Okay. That's the first thing. Second thing is that, and by the way, you can actually add it either to the user variables or the system variables. 
Now that depends on how you want it to apply. Do you want it to apply to all users or only you? If it's just you, then do it here. If it's you want it for the whole system, then do it here. But yeah, anyways, that's just your choice. Um, next up is, yeah, uh, let's add new, I guess, Android SDK. And after that, there is the Android NDK root. So new, let's say Android NDK root, give it a variable value. And let's go to the NDK, go to your version and copy that, put it into the variable value. Not the NDK folder, but the actual version that is inside the NDK. Okay, and that should hopefully work out. Uh, so yeah. Now let's actually restart code again. Mm, okay. If we try again, cargo APK, APK R run. Oops, what is going on here? Uh, what? All right, so I have thousands of errors for some reason. I guess it's because we have to set the, the target. <laughs> uh, probably, probably because we have to set the target, okay? So how do we set the target? Uh, let's see. Uh, dash dash, I guess. First of all, we need to add some target. So car cargo add dash dash target. Um, I guess Android unknown dash unknown dash unknown. Oops, rust up, rust up. So rust up, target add, and then tell it which one. I'm gonna try with Android unknown unknown. Oh, what? Uh, I don't remember how you add a new target. Or install target. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> I totally forgot. So, uh, how to install target. Rust up. Rust up target add. Rust up target list. Let's see uh, uh, Android, first of all, the Android stuff. Now, the thing is, my phone, if you remember, when, we say, we, when we've seen the, uh, the CPU-Z, uh, we found it that it's Arch64, ART64, which means ARM64. Uh, but uh, R64, of course, Android. Let's look for R64 Android. And known Linux GNU or Arch Linux Android. I mean, let me actually make sure to check it out again real quick. It just seen R64, so <laughs> I don't even remember which one I've used. So Arch64 Linux Android, I guess. I mean, I remember when I was seeing the... Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, hold on. Go back to the NDK. Where's the NDK? There you go. 
Okay, so what are the targets? I believe he added some target at some point, if I remember well. No? What? It doesn't seem like it. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Android target. Let's stop. Hmm. But you know what? I remember in when I was looking for Ash tutorial, right? Uh, oops. Rust here, right? There was an Android branch, and that's where I actually learned about Android, really. So if we go to Cargo Tomal here and look at that, okay, interesting. So as you can see, he's adding this build targets. As you can see, uh, a Arch Linux Android. Okay, so you can add all those build targets if you want. But in my case, since I have my phone is this guy, I'm just gonna add this guy for now. Uh, so essentially, I'm just gonna add that. So rust up target add, and there you go. Now it's gonna download it. It's gonna download the standard library for that architecture. In fact, you could download for all of them really. I mean, we could do that, really, so. But you know what, let's just keep it at that, okay? Next up is the, is you have to set the package metadata Android. So let's actually copy this for a second. And I don't need the other builds. I only need a Arch64. Okay. And this is actually a folder where you can set like some kind of, if you have some assets folder, but basically uh, in Android, you cannot just use the standard uh, IO library, like input output library, the file system, the standard the file system of SCD. You have to use some special Android stuff that I can cover later on. And to be able for that to work, you have to set it in the Android uh, metadata uh, right here, okay? As you can see, just uh, specifying the path to that folder, and there you go. Uh, okay, here you can, uh, it's, this is the manifest, the metadata Android application activity, okay? Here you can call your application, I guess. So let's say uh, Android application. Here you can tell it the orientation, is it portrait or what exactly, how is it rotated, uh, okay? and exported. Not exactly sure to be honest what's that, but let's keep it, why not? Um, and I believe that's essentially it. And if you want a logger, you could add features logger right here. So let's just copy this guy. Oops, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> copy and it should be 0 0.7 point zero and we added a new feature called logger and so we can actually log stuff up and in fact if we go back to the uh, to the github here in fact it's telling me that it's somewhere here if I remember if you go to login and std out. And mm, okay, there you go, the NDK glue. So you add this guy. Or I can just copy this whole line uh, up to here and replace this guy. Okay, here you give it, give, give it a tag. I'm gonna just call it Android application. Uh, okay. And then you give it which level, is it debug or what exactly? And so, yeah. 
Now, instead of print line hello world, I guess you could say debug. Uh -huh. But to be able to use such macros, you have to say cargo add uh, log, log crate. Now I can actually use that debug macro, I guess. So I have to just import it, import log, or I can say log debug. And I can say hello world. Okay, interesting. So we added the, the rest of target, nice. Next up we have to, hold on a second. All right, so now I forgot what I wanted to do. <laughs> so Carco APKR, let's try this up. It's compiling the Android application somehow. All right, interesting. So it finished compilation, which is lovely. So if we go to the, our target here, debug, we should find our APK. And there you go, APK. All right, let's go. Android application dash inlined. Nice. Command key tool not found. What? Command key tool not found. Are you kidding me? Uh, if I remember, there was like some kind of issue about Android, and uh, there was some interesting stuff there. Uh, not in the NDK, in the other Vulkan tutorial. Issues, how to run on Android, right? Exactly. So there was some valuable information from this guy. Mm -hmm. and it's not here, it seems like. Did you take a look at the Android branch? All right, so. Mm -mm -mm. I have no idea why it doesn't. Uh, it seems to not find key tool key tool. What if I say dash dash lib? Nope, that doesn't help at all. Uh, what about cargo r run? And by the way, if you want to log in to work <laughs> on anything other than Android, you have to also add some other implementation for because log crate is just kind of like an interface. Uh, but you need an implementation for each platform. Uh, so cargo add, I can add in vlogger. Oops, oops, oops. In vlogger. There you go. In, in my main file, I, here I can say uh, in vlogger. And the, there you go. Try in it. Dot in wrap. Okay, nice. And uh, in fact, if I click on this, I remember there was like some kind of rust log. Um, there you go. So you have to set the that variable, essentially, that rust log variable. So I'm in my CMD, not PowerShell. And so if I say cargo R now, it's gonna go ahead and compile uh, in vlogger. And so I don't see anything, and you know why? Because I have to set the Rust log variable to debug. So uh, set Rust log equal to debug. And then I can run again, and there you go. I get my debug, hello world. Uh, this is essentially for the desktop. For Android though, uh, somehow it doesn't work. Hmm. Uh, let's go back, uh, Android, build the RS, let's see what he's doing, oh, not this, uh, I mean, CargoToml, lib, cd lib, there you go, ndk glue, build targets, uh, t -t 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 -t. so 
for right now we actually have our apk so we're in fact ready you know uh, you can just put this apk into into your stuff but in fact we couldn't find ndk glue for some reason if i remember well why it's compiling once again crazy stuff but command key tool not found let's search google once again otherwise can we search for the android sdk maybe i don't know anyways uh so actually I'm gonna go ahead and research and I'm gonna go back to you. All right, I guess I found the issue. So somehow, somehow, the the Java runtime binaries aren't on the path, aren't on the environment variables. Uh, so let's actually do that ourselves. <laughs> I don't know why that happens because in fact, I tried this before, but I didn't have this issue, but you know, some, somehow that seems like the case. So uh, let's actually add a new variable. Uh, actually not new variable, but to, to the path. You go to the path and add a new link here to the GRE bin. Find where your GRE is, the bin folder. In my case, it's in program files, x86 java GRE bin slash bin, and then OK. And of course, you only have this GRE if you have actually installed uh, Java runtime. Uh, so let's say OK. And now, of course, we're going to have to restart uh, VS Code as always. So mm, code, there you go. Now, hopefully, that's going to run on our phone. OK, on my phone, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Let's see, cargo apk r. As you can see, it's performing streamed install. So it's streaming the in application into my Android phone. And right now it's working, it's running. And there you go, it is actually running on my Android device. Amazing. Let me see if I can actually also run uh, this CMD CPY or whatever that is. Um, so I can show you what, what I'm seeing. Okay, this is what I'm seeing. So when I run the application, essentially, uh, of course, it's empty, nothingness, but there you go. We have compiled our first application. Pretty cool stuff, isn't it? Although I don't see my hello world there, to be honest, for some reason. Uh, so why that's the case? Or maybe it's that I just didn't notice. It. Oh, there you go. Android application, hello world, let's go. <laughs> now the next step is probably to add into it win it. Uh, you know, so to actually create a proper window, etc. And somehow I uh, actually have quitted the application. Don't know why that's happened, but yeah. So I mean, hold on, say, look at this, okay? Look at this. So I'm just gonna. Cargo APK R. Uh, it's performance streamed install. And then, boom, let's go. <laughs> and that's how easy it is to actually debug without Android Studio, without Java, without any of that stupid stuff. There you go. And it's working also on desktop. So, hopefully, uh, leave for me a comment if you want to see the next video about how to create a proper window. <laughs> using Winit, etc. And we'll see how it goes. So that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you later. Goodbye. I'm so tired right now. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.